They live in a place that should be utterly inhospitable for any form of life, right next to superheated water jetting from vents in the seafloor. Temperatures in this dark realm can exceed 176 Fahrenheit, hot enough to boil a pot of water in high-altitude regions on land. Yet, somehow, instead of burning up in flames, here thrive some of the most extreme creatures on Earth. The Pompeii Worms These extreme survivors are named after what you might have guessed. The city of Pompeii, which was famously destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Just like the city was engulfed in volcanic fire, Pompeii worms somehow thrive in an environment of searing heat clinging to life in conditions that would be catastrophic for any other creature. Their discovery near hydrothermal vents, essentially underwater volcanoes, made the name a fitting tribute to their fiery habitat. Only recently discovered in the early 1980s, the Pompeii worm has forced scientists to rethink the limits of where life can still find a way to live. How does a creature so seemingly delicate withstand crushing pressures and near-boiling temperatures? What hidden adaptations allow it to flourish in conditions that should be fatal? And could its extreme survival strategies hold clues to life beyond Earth? Hydrothermal vents form when seawater seeps through cracks in the oceanic crust becomes superheated by underlying magma and is then ejected back into the sea. The near-boiling fluid is loaded with minerals, hydrogen sulfide, and metals that turn the surrounding waters extremely acidic and dark with particulate matter. These conditions pose lethal threats to almost all marine life, except for specialized vent organisms like the Pompeii worm. While the worm's body can experience shockingly high temperatures at its rear end, the head often remains in much cooler water. At only 5 inches long, you might ask how it handles these extremes across a single body. The key lies in the worm's ability to fine-tune its positioning. Pompeii worms build paper-thin, tube-like structures of mucus, sheltering inside them, with only parts of their body exposed to the hottest flows. This allows them to keep part of their body inside the burning vent, while keeping vital organs in more moderate waters. But why would a creature willingly expose part of its body to such blistering heat instead of just simply moving away from it? Surprisingly, despite hydrothermal vents being extreme, they are also an oasis of resources in the otherwise completely barren deep sea. By positioning part of their body inside the vent's flow, Pompeii worms tap into a steady stream of nutrients. And the best part about this is that there is almost no competition. While most marine life would be instantly cooked in these temperatures, Pompeii worms are one of the few creatures evolved to handle the heat, giving them exclusive access to an environment that few competitors could survive in, let alone any predators. And in the deep sea, where food is unbelievably scarce, these worms have effectively found an uncontested monopoly. So what does the Pompeii worm actually eat? These worms farm their own food, a thick layer of bacteria that coats their backs and tubes. They are believed to graze on these bacterial colonies, and by secreting mucus from their backs, they feed the thick colonies, allowing the microbes to thrive. Some scientists also suspect that worms might capture bits of organic debris drifting through the vents. But the majority of their diet is likely their resident microbes. But the bacteria don't just provide a meal. They form a protective barrier, shielding the worm's skin from the scorching acidic vent fluids. In return, the worms offer a steady supply of nutrients, making this a perfectly symbiotic partnership. And even more astonishing, these bacteria don't rely on sunlight like plants do. Instead, they use chemosynthesis, a process that converts the vent's toxic hydrogen sulfide and minerals into energy-rich compounds. Essentially, the Pompeii worm is a walking greenhouse, fueling an entire ecosystem with microbes that turn poison into life. And by living in the hottest, most extreme part of the vent, these worms gain exclusive access to an endless supply of bacteria to feed on. No hunting, no competition, just a built-in food source in one of the most extreme places on Earth. Even though they live at the bottom of the ocean in scorching temperatures, I actually think these guys have some of the most peaceful lives out there. 
However, even with insulation from bacteria, the heat from the vents is so hot that the Pompeii worm's tissues are still put at risk. These temperatures are hot enough to unravel crucial proteins in most organisms. But to counteract this, the worms produce unusually high levels of heat shock proteins, specialized molecules that prevent protein misfolding and assist in quickly refolding proteins that do become damaged. This mechanism is found in other extremophiles as well, from hydrothermal vent crabs to certain thermophilic bacteria. On top of that, Pompeii worms appear to have unique modifications in their cell membranes, making these membranes more stable at higher temperatures. Similar strategies are seen in hyperthermophilic archaea, which are tiny single-celled organisms that live inside of the volcanic vents. And Pompeii worms aren't just surviving in the extreme environment of hydrothermal vents, they are actively shaping it. By building delicate mucus tubes and fostering thick bacterial colonies, they change the conditions around them in ways that benefit other deep-sea creatures. These bacterial mats and tube structures create small, stable microhabitats in an otherwise chaotic and scorching environment. Tiny crustaceans, specialized mollusks, and other vent-dwelling animals take advantage of these structures, using them for shelter, food, or a safe place to anchor themselves. Without the Pompeii worms, these creatures might struggle to survive in such a harsh setting. In a way, the Pompeii worm is acting as an ecosystem engineer, a species that transforms its surroundings in ways that support other life forms. Studying creatures like the Pompeii worm gives us valuable clues about the limits of life on our planet and possibly elsewhere. The vent's chemical soups have been compared to conditions that might exist on icy moons like Europa or Enceladus, or on ancient Mars, when it still had volcanic activity. If this little worm can adapt to deep sea vents on Earth, could similarly robust life forms thrive beneath alien oceans? Pompeii worms also produce enzymes that remain stable at high temperatures. Enzymes with potential applications in industry from more efficient biofuel production to novel pharmaceuticals. The more we learn about these animals, the more we realize that nature often cracks solutions we'd never dream of. Solutions that might help address human challenges back at the surface. Against all odds, the Pompeii worm thrives where few other creatures dare to venture forging alliances with heat-loving bacteria, regulating its personal microclimate, and fueling deep-sea ecosystems. In a realm of what seems like pure darkness and other extreme conditions, life remains not only possible, but surprisingly vibrant and collaborative. Sometimes even the worst situations can be turned into something incredible, provided you're creative enough to adapt. If you enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to hear about next. Our channel is new, but I'm committed to putting out the best marine life content for you guys. I read every single comment you guys leave, guaranteed.